morning to everybody. Uh, today we are here in the session. Um, I am I am your moderator, and I will be presenting uh, Mariana Ortega and Paula Ursagasti. Okay, they are from Argentina, and they are going to be uh, presenting the following session implementing a flipped learning model in elt remote practicum they are from argentina maria nortega has worked in uh, english language education since 2007 in kindergarten primary high school and colleges she was awarded fulbright in lewis and clark college portland the united states she has things experience as an instructor of various fields of english language coordinator of English language training career and teacher trainer. In her studies, she focused on the design and planning of ELT, engagement for learners and new trends in ELT. She enjoys traveling, learning from students and having new experiences and meeting people, which she will probably do uh, when, when this is over and you can go to networking, right? And then we have Paula Ursagasti. She's an English teacher, graduated 2021, who faced the challenge of completing practicum virtually. Nowadays, she teaches at Los Lapacho School in English in Jujuy, Argentina. After she graduated, she immediately started studying licenciatura in Pasta University. Paula loves teaching, especially kids and teens. She's a music lover and fond of implementing her teaching practice. She considers music as a way to lower anxiety and keep confidence in life. She has a curious uh, spirit and loves meeting new challenges. That's why she will continue to grow academically. Okay, so um, please remember that to all of those that are present, you can write your questions in the Q&A on your right, you can see it. Uh, so we can, at the end, um, Mariana and Paula will have a few minutes to try to answer all the questions that can, that you can uh, write along the way. So don't hesitate to do that. Remember, please, to have your microphones muted. Very important. Microphones muted so that the background noise won't uh, interrupt. Okay? So I leave the microphone to my, Mariana and Paula. Okay, good morning, everybody. So I will start sharing the screen. Okay, so, okay, can you see the presentation? Yes, yes, we yes. can. Okay, so good morning, everybody. I'm greeting you again. Uh, well, the name of our session is Implementing Fit Learning Model in English Language Teaching. Um, it's an analysis and a reflection work based on a trainer and a trainee teaching experience in unprecedented pandemic times. I would like to thank Rilo and I would like all of you who have joined to share and to take some pieces of learning, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. Okay, the, the objectives of our work is to share strengths, challenges and learnings from a trainer and a trainee perspective in relation to remote practicum. We are going to address pedagogical processes in English language teaching practicum, which most of them led to the continuation of teaching and learning during the pandemic in remote. We are going to reflect on planning uh, an English language training course as from the perspective of building a community of active lifelong learners. Okay, so um, maybe you are wondering what does this image means? Okay, so this is just uh, a creative thinking activity to invite you to set the reasons of this experience that we are sharing with you. So, uh, yes, uh, in order to uh, invite you to make you part of this uh, session, we uh, have 
here three uh, questions for you. Okay, uh, last year all teachers faced um, challenge the to continue teaching and also uh, in our human level. Yes, so um, I want you to. Uh, to try to put yourself in the foot of um, teacher tra uh, trainees, student teachers that are that um, are uh, practicing for becoming a teacher. So the first question is, what would happen if you were trainees and you can't teach in face-to-face -face modality due to the pandemic? Okay. Next question is, what would happen if you, student teachers, trainees, think that you can't graduate because you wouldn't be able to teach face-to-face uh, -face, uh, lessons? Number three, what would happen if uh, uncertainty of not knowing when schools will uh, reopen starts uh, influencing your mental health? Yeah, you start feeling uh, sick um, because of uh, worrying about your future. Yeah, so choose one of these questions and please write your answer in the chat box. We will uh, read your answers. Okay, we want to know. Okay, we okay. are writing. Uh, uh, we want to explain to you that uh, we found the analogy in Lego's bricks and tiny pieces, okay? This is an analogy to think of uh, planning English language teaching training course and lesson plans as if they were bricks, parts that we need to activate problem solving, creativity, imagination, curiosity. Okay, Paula, could you please read the comments? Okay chat okay no comments for uh, at the moment so maybe they are thinking you are thinking yes okay we will restate uh, the the question so uh, this is an invitation to uh, make you think what if yes maybe they're crazy. thinking it's um trainers and pre-service teachers, right? The second one is student teacher. And the third one is, okay, influencing your mental health. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, meanwhile they are- Could you explain the third one just a little bit? Okay, so uh, let's imagine if you were trainees, okay? students college students who are in the fourth year or fifth year finishing your career and you have to do practicum practicum means teaching practices okay teaching practices all teachers of english have done this subject in the last year or throughout the years and uh, well paula she did practicum last year okay as a trainee now she is a teacher she of english and yeah. this is an invitation you can think what happened if you were a trainee uh, is mariana talking yes <laughs> yes oh, okay i can't hear her oh Okay. But I don't know, maybe, uh, can somebody please tell us in the audience if you can hear Mariana, maybe it's only me, I can't, that can't hear her. I'm sorry about this. No, it's okay. Are you able to hear? Yes. I, I, I'm able to hear. Yes, both of you. Well, Jacqueline. I can't, I can't. Yeah, can't. Oh. either. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Some, the, can anybody give an affirmative answer is it possible okay. to hear mariana jamila 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 said i can't could somebody else let, yeah. let us know if, if, if they can hear i mean who is who else is here yes ah, Lilia says Lilia. yes yeah 
All right. Um, okay, so apparently I can hear her a little bit. Yeah, you, Paula, please, if you can tell Mariana to talk a little bit louder because her volume okay. is very low. I can't hear okay. her, but if, if the public can, that's that's okay, as long as she speaks a little bit ah. louder. Maybe it get sounds very low. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sounds very low. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, attendees, for answering the question that Dinah said about the volume. Okay. I will repeat again. So, as well, coming back to this one, this is a creative thinking activity to invite you to put in others' shoes. Okay. So, um, you have three questions, okay? And this is to think, what if, what if, if I were a trainee, a student who is in the last year of her training, college career, and you can't teach in face-to-face -face modality because of the pandemic, okay? So you should answer one question in the chat box, okay? Yes. Maybe we can read the, the answers at the end of the session, too. Okay. Yes. Meanwhile, Jeff. Okay, let's wait. Ah, uh, sorry, as you couldn't hear, I said that uh, we use the analogy of Lego bricks, okay, in order to explain that this session is about... Sorry for um, the interruption, Paula. Yes. Uh, still, the sound is a bit too low. Do you think uh, Mariana can put the microphone uh, maybe closer to her mouth? And she has to yes, speak up yes. a little bit more, okay? Because uh, in the chat, we okay. have messages saying We're, that. The no, no, it's... Okay. Can you hear no. me? Yes. Oh, now okay. it's clearer. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, well, I will repeat again, sorry, sorry. So, um, as, as I was saying that we chose the analogy of bricks, of Lego, maybe you have played when you were a child or maybe you are a Lego lover, okay? And the analogy is to uh, explain that uh, English language training course and lesson planning and practicum what is teaching practice, okay, is a process of curiosity, imagination, problem solving, okay? So then you have three questions, okay? And you must choose one and answer in the chat box, okay? So let's put ourselves in trainees' shoes. So Paula, could you please read the questions again? Yes, so first question, what would happen if you were trainees and you can't teach in face-to-face -face, uh, modality because of the pandemic? So uh, next question is what would happen if you, uh, say a trainee teacher, think you can't graduate because you won't be able to teach face-to-face -face, uh, lessons? And number three is what would happen if uncertainty of not knowing when schools will reopen starts uh, making you feel anxious, making you um, feel sick even. Um, so it's influencing your mental health. Uh, here we have an answer. It says, uh, Gabby Ramos, she says, I would ask for advice from my colleagues or register in seminars or conferences like this to learn more about virtual teaching and learning. But I would face the situation with effort and imagination. Very okay. good, I love that uh, answer. Thank you a lot, Gaby Ramos. Okay, and you Lina? mentioned something, yeah. sorry, Paula, you mentioned something that it was included in English language training course to be part of communities of learning. Thank you. Go on. Yes. Uh, Lilia says, I would start looking for information about online teaching. Yes, of course, Excellent. that was the first step we uh, took. Excellent. Thank you very much. Is there any other answer? Uh, no yet. Okay. But maybe okay. we can share at the end of the of the session and we can continue. 
Okay, thank you very much. So let's move on. Thanks, so this is the roadmap, okay? The roadmap is our agenda. So these are some key uh, phrases, key titles that we wrote because uh, planning and doing practical is very extensive. So we have already explained what is let's build and solve it together, okay? So uh, this work is based on English language training course. Uh, I am the trainer and there were a group of uh, seven trainees, okay? And we decided to uh, write a project together, okay? Then I will explain it to you. Number two is a legal legal model was coming. As you read in the name in the name of the session, there is a new model that we used. Okay, uh, when each trainee builds his or her own legal model, it's related to lesson planning. Number four is let's use ladders, wheels in different hues and shades. It means all that what you said about online resources, digital resources, webinars, and number five is the conclusion, highlights and future opportunities, okay? So, I will start with number one. So, let's build and solve it together, okay? So, all of you have set some uh, solutions, some ways how to overcome this. So as a trainer, I started with needs analysis, okay? Needs analysis helps teachers to select appropriate tasks, contents, and goals to provide a better learning course and understanding of the purpose of remote teaching practices. So um, it was uh, April of last year, um, schools weren't reopened, and uh, I started uh, developing many steps in order to learn uh, trainees, motivations and intentions. One of them was needs analysis, so I made a, a Google form and I included many aspects related to the, the use of digital resources, uh, if they have it or not, um, what methodologies they were using okay so after the needs analysis and after analyzing uh, their responses okay i asked trainees if they were able to to continue in spite of all the changes that we were uh, suffering in a way so i start we started writing a practicum project what is a practicum project so every year I should write a project in which I should describe how teaching practices uh, would be carried out at primary schools, secondary schools, uh, and who are the cooperating teachers. The cooperating teachers are the ones who are in charge of the classes, uh, the one who welcome us. So I uh, found that this project okay was related to uh, make trainees uh, start feeling motivated in spite of the unprecedented pandemic times that we were facing so uh, if you think about implementing a practical project one of the theoretical framework would be motivation okay so i motivated them to write this project in order to find direction okay uh, I wasn't alone, I was with them, so that is why my inner intention, my motivation helped them to start contributing to this project, okay? So what project or means for us as teachers of English? It means that uh, in a project we are encouraging students' interest, we are addressing specific issues, in this case, how to change, how to readapt or reinvent practicum, okay? And it is a collaborative work, okay? So let's move on. Yes? Yes, the next, uh, the next uh, step in our road was a new legal model was coming. Um, 
We, uh, in previous uh, years with other teachers, when I was in third year, I used a lesson plan that was uh, of three parts in uh, warm up, introduction, practice and production and close up. That was the, the lesson I was, I learned previous years. Uh, but in this year, I had to add a new one and it uh, was a flipped learning. Uh, flipped learning is a, a model that inverts the traditional classroom by introducing concepts uh, before the class starts. And it allows educators to use class time just to guide uh, each student through an active and dynamic um, and innovative applications. We, in, in that, it's in that moment that we use the, the apps. Um, well, uh, I had to adapt to this new uh, lesson, to use this new way of uh, planning a class. Uh, next uh, slide. Okay. So, uh, yes. yes. Thank you, Paula. So, um, among many methodologies, because I ha we had to systematize the process of developing lesson plan assessment. So we found that uh, flip learning was the one which could uh, meaningfully adjust to the situation in which we were facing. So why we chose this? Because uh, according to this model, uh, we have the four pillars, okay? The four pillars are that flipped learning um, creates a flexible environment, okay? So students learn at home, they learn when they want, I mean, when they find the, the moment to, to start watching, developing activities, okay? So homework, in a way, is said before, and it's very flexible because they are responsible Okay, flexible means to be responsible of doing when you can do it, okay? What about learning culture? Learning culture is related to learning is built up before the class. Learning is reinforced during the in-class when we face in face-to-face -face modality or when we face in, an, in a synchronous meeting, okay? Intentional content. What does it mean intentional? That we teachers, we create, we curate content, we decide which contents we are going to prioritize, especially last year and this year we are prioritizing the main contents, okay? And in this way we are uh, developing skills as professional educators because we are learning to find solutions, as you said, we are learning to look for better tools we are adapting and in a way we are sharing with everybody which skills which resources we are using okay to promote learning so flip learning could adjust to video conference lessons uh, synchronous meeting and now we will move on to explain how we did it yes Okay, these are uh, some comments that my classmates did when Miss uh, when Miss Mariana asks us about uh, what if we were if we all agree to teach uh, with this with this uh, model with flip methodology and well we all agreed to face the challenge as uh, Gabby said uh, we all <laughs> we were ready <laughs> yes. Like, for example, I'm going to read one uh, in Spanish. Me comprometo a buscar alternativas para poder realizar nuestras prácticas. Si bien es una forma nueva, nos va a servir en un futuro. Okay? Um, other classmates said, asked, ¿Cómo se organiza una lesson plan para clases de enseñanza remota? ¿Y qué es lo que se toma en cuenta? That, was, uh, that were uh, questions that we all have in our minds at that moment. So uh, next slide. So in the, okay. we are going to talk about that uh, now. 
Okay, so sorry, just to recap. So yes. Candelaria, just in case someone is not a Spanish speaker, so she is committed to look for changes, okay? Ah, yeah. And sorry. to adapt to um, online teaching. So Mateo, she, he was wondering about how to systematize because for us, for teachers who are who have been teaching for more than uh, three, four years, the lesson plan, the organization is in our minds, okay? We, we can highlight, write some um, moves, okay? But we have a training experience, but for trainees, they need to adjust to a template, to a model and to follow procedure. And then from that training, they will be able to then plan their future classes in their future works okay so let's move on yes um well the first uh, step we took uh, before uh, planning uh, and it has to do with motivation was uh, interviews um we had to interview uh, a teacher that was um of course working in uh, in the school that uh, was using this uh, flipped uh, methodology. And uh, this part was uh, very important for me to be, to, to keep motivated to continue doing practicum in remote, uh, in remote form. An interview um, is a ped pedagogical space and it's a tool of learning. Um, it plays a uh, reformulation uh, renewal and recasting. And it is um, a reflective mirror too, uh, because you talk with that uh, teacher that is um, uh, working at the moment. And so you can learn from uh, his or her experience. And uh, at the same time, the, the, this teacher also learns from you and it this experience was uh, really um a great for me i learned a lot and i um i was uh, eager to continue the this path so um next slide <laughs> okay yes uh interviews we interviewed teachers who were exploring and implementing some characteristics or of flip learning, okay? Yes. So, sometimes why we try to adapt it, okay? Because we try to situate learning. Uh, okay, so what is flip learning? Uh, so this is uh, this is very extensive, but in a way I, I, we try to summarize, okay? So um, this was the process in which we carried out the lesson plans okay so in this sec in this slide we can describe what each trainee builds okay so first of all uh, we uh, included bloom's taxonomy i think maybe you are familiarized with it the cognitive levels uh, which are related to actions to learnings uh, that we want students develop and ac acquire at the end of the class, okay? So um, in each lesson plan, students, student teachers uh, had to write two objectives, one for the pre-class, okay, and the other for the in-class. Um, in other words, a lesson plan in flipped learning has uh, more than uh, three stages, okay? As you can see, pre-class, in-class, post-class, and then we have feedback and portfolio, okay? So these are the three. So three, uh, one objective for the pre-class and the other objectives related to application and creation of an activation of contents for the in-class, okay? For the pre-class in a lesson plan, in a flip lesson plan, student teachers had to screencast to record videos, okay? In the videos, they had to instruct to teach a content uh, through modeling an application. Of course, after watching the video, uh, students had to uh, do activities okay interactive activities so the video plus the uh, uh, interactive activities okay 
the video was sent a week before and a day before or three days before, depending on the cooperating teachers. The cooperating teachers are the ones who are in charge of the class who welcome trainees to teach. So then we should move on to the in-class. The in-class is the instruction, implementation and teaching. So in a video conference lesson, synchronous mode, um, trainees should plan procedure in order to clarify concepts, in order to make students solve problems, in order to make students speak, communicate, interact. The, the approach is student-centered, what is different from the one, from the traditional one in which it was teacher-centered, okay? Uh, trainees were very selective in co-constructing uh, strategies and co-constructing activities, okay? And of course, they were assessing, they were carrying out formative assessment. After the video conference or synchronous meeting ended, they, uh, students, had to uh, do homework, okay? I will use that familiar, familiarized word for the post-class. So they had to apply what they have learned. Uh, trainee teachers had to assess, okay? Formative and summative assessment. Um, uh, but all of these were carried out using digital resources, okay? After the the video lesson, the video conference lesson ended, um, trainees received feedback, feedback from the cooperating teacher and feedback of me, okay? Uh, another aspect about using flipped learning in remote through video conferences was that uh, all the lessons were recorded. So then trainees reflected uh, on recording lessons in order to write um, his or her SWOT analysis. Okay, what does it mean SWOT analysis? They had to reflect and write uh, their strengths, their weaknesses, their opportunities and threats, okay, through a critical reflection and self-assessment of form. So after teaching the lesson, they had to create their portfolio, okay? So maybe you have created a portfolio, but this time they had to do it in a digital form, okay? So the portfolio was a collection of experiences, a collection of how they were progressing, how they were making effort and how they were collecting resources, materials, everything they have created. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, flip learning. Yes. So, we're well, everything yes. was systematized. So, um, before teaching, okay, we did micro teaching. Micro teaching in our video conference lessons of practicum okay so micro teaching involves plan replan i had to correct i had to give uh, trainee teachers feedback after they corrected they had to teach okay and after they teach they uh, they have to receive feedback from peers from peer from other trainees and from me okay so this technique of teaching was placed before and you can see how uh, it it is a holistic process okay so it's very uh, active and it requires uh, too much time and in that way you are training your mind your role your teaching skills i will move on so before going to 
to the resources that we use to teach through video conference. Um, well, I should explain that everything was based on uh, content curation skills. Okay, so that is why I say let's let's use ladder wheels in different hues and shades because there are we teachers of English are very. Uh, blessed because there are many billions and billions of resources that we can get access but yep, this time I presented trainees uh, the, the, the reason that we should create okay or you, we should curate curate the contents that we are presenting uh, to students so if you are wondering what is content curation so it's what you have been doing about collecting organizing but i will highlight this work creating okay for specific context for a specific class okay so selecting contents evaluating if the resource if the platform if the application was uh relevant uh, creating because there are billions of resources that we can get access, but it's better to select it and create it and start uploading your material and start sharing with the rest of the world of teachers. Organizing, so everything as, as I as I have described the stages of lesson plan, so organizing was another skill that students developed in curation and of course storing storing to start um storing is related to uh, how they are going to share these because students were at home okay we couldn't reach so we should think and select the best storing platform for them to get access to videos to interactive activities okay Yes, and now uh, uh, what's a flipped video? Okay, for this lesson we uh, implemented flipped video and well, it's a, an instructional and powerful tool that is designed for pre-class activities. Okay, this uh, video was created by the teachers or trainees and we had to create the videos to design, to uh, record and uh, we delivered the video um, three classes uh, before or uh, sometimes a week uh, before so students have to watch the video at home and then in the in stage class uh, we uh, they have to apply all they uh, learn from the video and okay. Sorry, Paula. The most important is that, um, well, we have learned from last year that we were assigning students to watch videos from other teachers from all over the world. But yes. uh, but we discovered that some videos were very long or didn't adjust to our contents, our objectives, and then we 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 felt that students really appreciate our own creation of materials okay go on yes okay um for this a uh, flipped video you need to consider some important characteristics in order to make it uh, effective because it's not it is not just a video but it must be effective um first of all and something that i didn't uh, know uh, before a uh, practicum was about cognitive load Yes, because our memory, our memory uh, must uh, be trained to memorize and to act, uh, to be able to make this process of acquisition of learning. So for this, we need uh, to use uh, visuals. Okay, that is the most um, the most catching way to train the, the brain okay so um, then we uh, needed uh, to record our voices uh, in the video and uh, well your voice must you must be careful you must uh, talk in a clear way 
um, your voice must be, um, uh, you must uh, take into account the speed that you are talking, if you are talking very slow or fast. Um, another thing is signaling. That's very important to add um, icons to your slides, yeah, because we worked with um, slides to create our video. First we did the slides and then uh, we recorded all the slides as a presentation. Um, so in these uh, slides, you need to take into account uh, signaling as uh, it's uh, everyone says, you know, um, some images uh, says, say more than words. So um, for example, if um, you want them to repeat uh, the sentences in the video, you can use an icon of a person talking in order it, to replace that the instruction yes in um so uh, another thing is uh in visual in visuals you have to take into account um font and the size of the font the color of the slides the color of the pictures you are going to use um you can use the stickers and um so you must uh, bear in mind the colors, the contrast of colors in order to be um, visually pleasant for students and appealing. Another, yes, yes another yes. important thing is um, uh, we used, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Bitmojis is an app that where you can create your avatar. So there uh, we, uh, most of my classmates, me and my classmates, were uh, afraid to show our faces, to show our, you know, our image, uh, our image, our personal image. So, uh, creating an avatar was very effective for us. It helps us. It helped us a, a lot because we, we could speak through the the avatars. Um, well. Um also we uh, used to tend you have to make it a, you have to make a balance. you have to keep a balance in the slide. You don't have to use a lot of images or a lot of uh, very uh, strong colors, let's say, or a lot of uh, words, for example. So you must keep a balance uh, of um, of the that is a cognitive load, not to shock students, but just to call their attention. But uh, that's why we wrote here a creative uh, mini minimalist. Yes, sometimes uh, you uh, it you tend to add very a lot of pictures, but maybe they are distracting students and not helping them. Um, next slide. Uh, Okay. Well, for okay. yes, okay, go, go, go. for this part, uh, we the apps we use um, were uh, to create the video. First, we did slides, as I told you. Uh, some apps we used were uh, Genially, uh, Google Slides, and Canva. Uh, Genially, I used Genially. Uh, I, I, uh, it is not that I don't like Genially, but it has a lot of tools. It uh, demands a uh, time for you to explore and explode all the tools that Genially has. So uh, what I, well, so that's why I prefer Google Slides because it is uh, more handy. Um, it's uh, very similar to PowerPoint. That was the, the app that we were using before pandemic. Then I learned how to use Google Slides and where. Uh, and Canva is uh, another of my favorite apps because Canva has um, more design. It has a lot of predetermined images, uh, stickers, photos, um, and uh, you can uh, play a lot with uh, those uh, tools. And it is very intuitive, I think. Um, so, well, I highly recommend uh, Google Slides and Canva. So, uh, I think they are very handy. 
Um, next slide. So, uh, well, uh, once we uh, have the slides, all the slides done and uh, designed, we uh, had to record uh, our lesson for the video. Uh, well, these are the apps that we uh, learned to, to use because I didn't know anything about screencasting before <laughs> the pandemic, of course. Um, I didn't know that we it was possible to record your screen, the, your computer screen and your voice at the same time. So it was a great uh, discover. So one of the, um, these are some screencasting uh, apps for screencasting, Camtasia, uh, OBS Studio, Screencastify, and YouTube. Okay, uh, I used um, the, the app that I used uh, the most from the start was OBS Studio. Um, it is a free app. You can down download it in your computer and it is very handy, but uh, there is a step that you have to, where you have to uh, look for tutorials for help for help because uh, you have to set uh, to set the the app there are some settings very specific and that has to do with um um with inform uh, yes informatica let's say so it's kind of hard but it is very necessary for you to watch a, a, a tutorial for this part for setting the app once you have the setting then you the, the app is very handy. You will find it uh, very useful. And why we included YouTube here? Um, because um, once we when once I finished um, recording screencasting my screen, uh, the OBS Studio saves your video in MP4 uh, format. Uh, in your computer so it is very heavy it's a very heavy video so in order in order for you to not to uh, save everything in your computer you can use youtube it is a very uh, useful app to save your videos um, here in youtube once i finish my i have my video done I uh, used to uh, go to YouTube, to my account in YouTube. I think most of you will have an account uh, in YouTube because it is very easy, right? You have to sign in with your email, with your Gmail and everything is connected. So you have to go to your YouTube channel and there there is uh, an option to uh, upload your video. Once you upload your video, you have to set set it to be uh, private because uh, well you can decide if you want to, if you want to do it public or private but uh, uh, maybe you want to keep it private the first time so well you can keep it private and there it is uh, the the YouTube gives you a, a link for your video. So once the, your video is uploaded in uh, YouTube, the only thing that you have to do is to get the link and you can share it with your students. So you don't, you don't need to download the video in your computer and then to uh, ask the students to download the video and because sometimes they say, no, I don't, I don't have memory in my cell phone. I don't have space and I can't watch the video. So they're, they're, uh, they don't have uh, excuses anymore because uh, you can send them the link, just the link, and they have to click there and your video is going to be there uh, available for students to watch it anytime. Uh, you know how YouTube works, so they can watch it twice or uh, three times whenever they need. Yes. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. So um, 
what, what about uh, planning or for for the pre-class which are uh, some tips or some procedure that you have to follow for active learning in editing videos okay in a video you should include guided question you should plan and write your script this is what i checked you should uh, plan your video and plan the the activities that they are going to do based on the video. In the video, you, you should show enthusiasm, what is the energy to engage students. In the video, you can integrate questions, okay? And um, you can integrate listening activities, repetition, chanting, and the videos were uh, uh, well, in the videos, we have experienced that uh, videos should last between uh, five minutes to eight minutes, no more than that, okay, for primary school learners and high school learners. So let's move on to, okay, Paula. Yes, this say? is, uh, yes, this is a, an example. This is the video I made with uh, well, I screencasted with OBS Studio. Well, I first I did the slides, and then uh, well, I chose uh, Phineas and Ferb, this very uh, famous uh, uh, cartoon for students to to catch their attention, and I uh, formed the stickers in uh, Word. You can uh, do your own stickers in Word by um, cutting it and there is an option to cut images and uh, forming uh, making uh, stickers so you can uh, do it uh, in work and then uh, uh, paste it to uh, school google slides yeah okay, so, so and I then i yes please you can watch it just a minute Can you listen? Sorry? Hello, we are Phineas and Ferb. This is our house. They are our mother and father. Their names are Linda and Lawrence. Where are they? Are they in the kitchen? Are they in the bathroom? Okay, sorry, I will just no. stop. As you can see, yes. uh, there are callouts or bubbles in order to include communicative English. And then uh, there's noticing and modeling. Okay, we are using teaching strategies like color coding. Okay, and a key, the use of concept check question or key question to elicit um, to elicit phrases and ideas in during the video conference lesson. Okay, synchronous way. So let's move on to the next. Um, oops. Okay. Oops. So I think I should. Bedroom. Okay, I will shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one. So, could you please explain? Yes, uh, that was uh, well. The, the previous one was a, a lesson for a primary school. Now, this one is a, for secondary school, and here it was a challenge because it was a technical school. So it was uh, English for specific purposes, let's say, because I had to learn all the vocabulary uh, concerned to engineering. So it was very hard to, to create this video and this class, but uh, I enjoyed it. So you can watch the, the example. Good afternoon, students. How are you? Today, in this video, we are going to make a revision of the present simple in the affirmative, negative, and interrogative form. En este video, vamos a hacer un repaso del presente simple en la forma afirmativa, negativa, e interrogativa. Okay, so yes. the use of Spanish was necessary because uh, students at this uh, technical school, uh, well, they 
uh, well, methodology is based on English for a specific purpose, reading and comprehension, uh, text based on specific vocabulary, electromechanics, uh, IT, um, architecture vocabulary is also related to this school. So yes. we are running out of time. Okay. Yes, sorry. So let's, let's, it's okay. Yes. Oops. Uh, um, I just one uh, thing I want to mention, I think it's very important to mention that we had to create a context for each class. It was not uh, that you have to write the theory, but we had to create a context to uh, think about your lesson and contextualize uh, the, the slides like a, a story for them, you know. It is not just theory, but a context. Uh, I don't know if I if you understand. Yes, we situate learning. I mean, yes. that is why I told you not to um, pick up any video, any uh, digital resource that are in any websites, but it's to curate. You can uh, think of it, you can adapt it, recreate it, and make it your own uh, material for the class in which you are. So I told you that, in a way, a flipped lesson has three stages, pre-class, in-class, and post-class. So the video was for pre-class. Now, what about in-class? In in-class in stage, we uh, try to emphasize collaborative work, oral student work, participation, gamification. Um, uh, we also uh, influence uh, the objective of building, okay? So in, through video conference, students should speak, say a sentence, say a word, uh, read dialogues and speak. So for that reason, we use these application and platforms, iPuzzles, Bamboozles, Quizzes, Edpuzzles and Pear Deck in order to make it more interactive and uh, involve them and engage them and to speak, okay? Because that was one of the objectives of the main objectives. So. Maybe you are wondering um, which applications or platforms we use for the post-class or what we usually call it homework. So we use Edpuzzles again, ISL Collective, worksheets. Uh, well, it is important to say that um, trainee teachers, they created their own live worksheets, okay? in a live worksheets platform and ISL Collective and in Ed Puzzles. Uh, well, we use Jamboard as a digital board. We use other boards too, but we are not going to mention right now. And uh, I think you are wondering, well, as a trainer, how, how did you assess, okay? How uh, you learned that they have that they are passing the subject, they are passing the course. So the evaluation of each video class was based on three components in a rubric, okay? The components are planning and preparation, classroom environment and instruction. So which were the performance levels? Needs improvement, weak, uh, effective, highly effective. And in each component, just to summarize, I will say planning, flip learning methodology, gamification, classroom environment, where is classroom management, uh, student uh, teacher talking time, teacher talking time to reduce that, and instruction, what was teaching, and all the procedures that we use to make students teach and learn. So um, everything was compiled in a portfolio, and Paula, please, I think you yes. are going to say just a few sentences. Yes, yes, uh, Miss, there is a, a, a sound. If you can check your microphone, there is a sound, a noise. Yes, uh, okay, portfolio in this part, well, we uh, saved everything we did th through the whole year. Our, we had to organize it and uh, save it in a portfolio, yeah? It, uh, for, uh, we had to create uh, different uh, stages, uh, I mean, not, to classify, yes, to separate from uh, all our lesson plans, then all feedback, 
then the recordings of our classes and well it was the all the activities we did through the the year we uh, compiled uh, our our products let's say in this portfolio to make the portfolio i used google sites that is uh, a, an app of Google that was very, very, um, I highly recommend it to uh, make a portfolio. And well, I don't know if I can show you the portfolio miss or not. <laughs> you can tell Dina, me. Dina, uh, do you have um, excuse me, please. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, it's already time. I can't hear Mariana, so maybe I'm interrupting so, her right now. <clears throat> so please um, take that into consideration and also there's one uh, question on the chat yes I would like to answer it I'm sorry about oh. any interruption oh no it's okay so uh, it's uh, please, uh, uh, near your your, your microphone <laughs> you will have to uh, put it close your mouth we can't listen to you okay can you hear me uh, but very, very low. Well, I'll, I'll solve can. it. I don't know. Now, what about? Can you please yes, tell me? No. Okay. No, yes. So, um, at the portfolio, as I as I was telling you, it's part of the reflective methodology that I used. Okay. So, highlights and opportunities. So, we have built up a project, a product of practicum. So now we are facing a hybrid modality. So some insights from flipped methodology that we use in remote teaching in this English language training course um, made us reflect that we can work as a community of learners. I learned to use many apps uh, together with trainees. We learned to discover that uh, we need to face our weaknesses in order to overcome and be better teachers of English. So from now on, okay, uh, it's a great opportunity to, to start thinking that uh, English language teaching trends are very meaningful if we adapt it and we start creating our mat our op our materials. And of course, there is a sense that we uh, me and trainees think that face-to-face -face instruction is uh, one of the stages that they have to start training when when schools are open and mm. this is something that we should continue working okay in developing uh, teaching skills in face-to-face -face instruction so uh, that is the end of our session and i would like to answer the question that Dinah said well, uh, the question, it says, when did the feedback sessions happen? Well, the, the feedback happened right uh, when the video conference lesson ended. So immediately the feedback took place. So the feedback was based on trainees to discover their strengths, their weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats that they are related to all the decisions they made that they m must stop doing in the future lessons. Okay, were they required or volu voluntary for teachers? Um, uh, well, I I chose cooperating teachers. I, I'm not sure if I am answering your question cooperating teachers who were implementing flipped lessons through video conference through synchronous mode so i chose them because uh, well uh, teaching was happening via whatsapp via and i thought that wasn't a, an appropriate context for trainees uh, to be part of those groups because in our uh, context um, some legal terms weren't set from the very beginning and I should take care of trainees and take care of the students that were coming were welcoming trainees to and me okay so I know I'm not sure if I am answering your question Elizabeth Elizabeth 
Okay, Taina, I think uh, uh, we reached the end. Uh, miss, there is one slide more, I think. Oh, sorry. To say goodbye. To say goodbye. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, um, thank what you. break is needed to finish? Yes. <laughs> But never stop learning, okay? So that is a brick that we need as teachers of English. If you want to contact us, you have our email address. And please, uh, all your feedback, if you would like to tell us, it's highly welcomed. Yes. If you want to know anything about any app or, or anything else, uh, you can contact us uh, or me, uh, Paula. And free feel, uh, feel free to to ask me. Okay. Okay, Dina. Oh, thank you very much for your comments. Yes. Jenny, <laughs> Jenny Elia, Elia, Elizabeth, Angelina, yes. Gabby. Gabby was the first person to to be in our session. <laughs> thank you, Gabby. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support, guys. Uh, we try to summarize everything, but well, yeah. uh, if something is missing, we can it answer your questions. Yes, it was a lot of uh, the experience was uh, full of new things to learn and to adapt to our teaching practice and to our lives too. <laughs>